In this video, we're gonna learn how color nodes work in DaVinci Resolve. Here we are in the color page of Resolve, and we have a few clips here. By the way, if you wanna practice your color grading, you can get this footage from our Media Vault. There's a link in the description. It's called Color Grading Practice Footage. Let's just close a couple panels here, and we'll just work on this cowboy shot, huh? So, nodes. This is probably the most intimidating part of the color page, but the basics of it are actually really simple. By default, any shot that you're working on has one node, and it's selected. Now, what the heck is a node? A node is this box, and you'll notice it's connected to this part and this part, and that's because nodes are arranged in basically like a flow chart, and it goes from left to right. We start here, and then we go into this box, this node, and then we come out of this node and into this little dot. This left dot is the beginning of the image, so the untouched, ungraded image, and then this right dot is the result of what we're doing in the color page. So it's basically everything after we do our color grades. And in between, this is where the magic happens. What's in the box? So like I said, by default, we have one node and it's selected. And anything that we do in the color palettes down here, that lives in this node. So if I were to make this really pink, this adjustment of this offset, that lives here in this box. If I were to adjust the curves and make this crazy S curve like this, this adjustment right here lives in the box. If I were to go to our color warper and do some kind of craziness here, this, guess what, lives in the box. Anything that we do down here in the color controls lives in the box, okay? Now, if you're doing a basic color grade, something where you're just tweaking your image a little bit and you're not doing anything fancy, you can pretty much ignore nodes. You can literally close this nodes panel and ignore the fact that there are even nodes. Just put your head right down into the sand. <laughs> it's totally okay, because even though all this stuff lives in this node, if you're only going to use one node, it doesn't matter. I can still do my color adjustments, change my temperature, my saturation, anything I wanna do. And if I'm making adjustments to the entire screen, and I want to affect pretty much everything the same way with one of these tools down here, then I could totally adjust this shot and not worry about nodes at all. But there are two big reasons why I, I might, you might consider looking into the nodes thing. The first one is kind of a workflow hack. So if we open these nodes here, and I'll just reset all of this. I'll just right click and say reset node grade. Remember all of these adjustments live in this box. And so we can do a bunch of different adjustments all at once here. So I can add an S curve. I can change this temperature a little bit warmer. I can push up the saturation. I can push up the contrast. I can change the pivot. I can push around the color boost. I can go over here to the color warper and change some colors around. I can do all kinds of stuff in this one box but I can choose to kind of separate out these jobs just to keep myself a little bit organized. Here's what I mean. What I could do instead is reset all of my grades and I could use this first box just to make this a little bit brighter. And then I could right click and say node label and we'll call this brighter. And then I can make a new box, a new node and do something else. So I could right click on this and go down to add node add serial. I can also hit alt S and that's going to make another box next to it. And so this is another node, another box that's going to come after my first correction. And so once I've made this brighter, maybe I want to add a little bit of saturation. So I could push the saturation up and brighten up those colors a little bit. Right click here, node label sat for saturation. Now what I've done here is really, really cool because I've organized what I've done to this image into different steps. I made it brighter and then I increased the saturation. Now you might say big whoop, who cares? The advantage here is that if I'm only choosing to do the brighter thing in this first node, I can turn off this node by just clicking on the number and I can see what this image looks like if I didn't make it brighter. And so I could kind of just see that one adjustment by clicking this on and off. Same thing for my saturation. I can click the saturation on and off and I can really isolate what difference is that adjustment making. I can make another node. I can hit Alt S and maybe I wanna add a little contrast. So I can push this contrast up, change this pivot around, right click, node label, contrast, and I can see what difference this is making. So off and on, and I can decide, oh, I don't know if I like that, or maybe that saturation is a little bit heavy now. So maybe I'll go to the saturation and turn that back down and now we can see what this looks like before and after the contrast with or without the saturation 
and with or without the brightness. And so I'm separating these tasks that I'm doing with different tools down here, and I'm kind of sorting them into these different boxes. Even though they could all fit in one box, I'm separating them into different boxes so that I can stay organized and I can turn them off and on and sort of keep the parts separated. So that is a great big reason to use nodes because you can keep yourself organized. And let's say I wanna copy this color grade to shot two. I can select shot two and then middle button mouse click on shot one, and that's going to copy this color grade and also all of the nodes onto my second clip. And maybe I like the contrast and the saturation, but I want this to be brighter. I can go over here to this brightness and I can adjust this to be the right brightness that I like and make that look really nice. If I were copying this the other way, going to shot one and then clicking down on my scroll wheel on my mouse on shot two and copying this over, this is making this too bright. And so I could do something like right click and reset the node grade for that brighter node and then I have a much better result. I can kind of dial this in myself. That's something I can't do if everything is in one node, right? And so if I do something like this where I adjust the brightness and the curve and the temperature and the saturation and everything all in one node. I certainly can do that. I'll just rename this a bunch of stuff. I can take this a bunch of stuff node and copy it to shot one by middle clicking. And now maybe I want to keep this same curve and keep the same temperature, but I want to reset the brightness. Now, where did I do that again? And I might be able to track that down and find it, but it sure is a lot easier to right click and just say reset node grade, but then I get rid of all the other things that I did. So that's why when we break it up into different parts, it's easier to copy that grade and adjust it for the shot. Copy this over here. I could reset this grade and dial that in with the same saturation and contrast. Copy this over here to this one. Again, maybe we need to adjust the exposure a little bit. Maybe that contrast is a little heavy now. And so I can go to whatever part I think is wrong and then adjust it. But I'm keeping the same basic flow. That's a really big reason to use nodes is to kind of break up and organize your color grades. Now, the types of nodes that we've been using are called serial nodes. Like crunchy sweet cereal. Not Captain Crunch, but serial like in a series. And so the first thing that happens to our image is we make it brighter then we adjust the saturation, then we adjust the contrast if we're following these nodes. And so one happens after the other. And the order of the nodes matters depending on what you're doing. For instance, if I had a node here that turned things black and white, I'll just take the saturation down, right click and call this BW for black and white. And then I made a new node. And after that, we're gonna call this uh, pink. Let's take this offset and push it really pink. What we get is a certain result where we get this kind of pink tinted black and white image. Now, if we were to switch the order of this, I'll just kind of move these around here, and we were to turn this pink and then turn it black and white, here's the result that we get. It's black and white, because what we're doing is we're pushing a lot of pink into our image, and then we're desaturating it. So the result is we get a black and white image. Whereas here, we're making it black and white and then pushing pink into it. So there's the difference that the exact same nodes, but just switched around can make. And so depending on what you're doing, you might want to pay attention to the order of the serial nodes. Now, serial nodes are not the only kind of node inside of the color page of Resolve. If you right click and go to add node, there are several different kinds of nodes here. The first one is add serial. The second one is add serial before, which just adds a serial node before this node, which can be handy. But the third one down is a parallel node. Let's just take a look at this chart. What this does is it doesn't do this correction or this correction before or after the other ones, but it does it at the same time, which can be really helpful if you have a effect that you want to kind of mix with another effect. So in this case, if we had a completely desaturated image here, and then we were pushing some pink into it, this is going to kind of mix these together at the same time. In fact, if we were to reset this and push up the saturation to 100%, then these kind of cancel each other out. We're desaturating the image, and at the same time, we're adding saturation to the image. And so we're doing negative 50 saturation and plus 50 saturation, which ends up being no change. If I were to use this rainbow sparkle button and turn on and off our color, there's no difference. But if we were to do this with a serial node, check this out, desaturate it and then saturate it a lot, the result is black and white because the result of this node is a black and white image that has no saturation. And if you increase the saturation of a black and white image, nothing really happens because there's no saturation to increase. And so parallel nodes can be really great if you wanna kind of mix your color corrections together so that they combine well. It's also worth noting that each one of these is using the original image as its starting point. 
And so in this node, if we were going to change something based on a certain color, so for instance, maybe the skin tone on his face, and we wanted to brighten just his face, we can select his skin color. Whereas on this one, if we wanted to desaturate everything, we would have a black and white image, but this one would still be brightening his skin color because it's selecting the skin color from the original footage and not from the black and white image. So parallel nodes are really cool. Now, kind of similar to a parallel node is a layer node, add node, add layer. And this looks almost exactly the same here on the node chart, but the difference is that we're not mixing these two together. We're putting this one over this one, literally like a layer. We're adjusting this image and putting it on top of the other image. And so if this background image is black and white, and if we were to put the original image that with a little bit of saturation on it, then we're going to see this original image with the saturation because it completely covers up the background layer, which is black and white. This is a little bit easier to see if we put a window on this node, which is also a big reason to use nodes. If we go to this little ellipse thing here and click on circle, this is going to make a mask that gets applied to the node. And let's make this node really pink so we can see what's going on. And so what we have is an image that's just within this mask and it's transparent everywhere else. And we're putting this on top of our black and white image here. And when we combine those, we get this pink circle over our black and white image. And so this layer is going on top of this background layer. This kind of thing is used quite often if you want to say like, if you want to isolate skin tones from say a really strong look, you could add a layer node. And here we'll just select the skin tones with a qualifier. And I'll go to highlight mode here and we'll just kind of select that skin really kind of blur this selection. And now we have this image that's just these parts and we're putting it over this background image and let's just make the background really blue, all right? And when we combine these together, boop, we get our skin tones over that really blue background. And of course we could refine this further with a window. So I'll just take this window and kind of do a quick mask here. This would be a lot of work to do in motion, but we can kind of look at what this would roughly look like. And you can also adjust the opacity of this node by going to this panel right here and adjusting this key output gain. That's kind of like our opacity. And so we can kind of fade this in and out. And we could really dial in a look here that's very <laughs> teal and orange by using this skin layer and putting it over our really blue layer. Here's without the skin. We have that skin really blue. And we're putting our normal skin over that layer. So that's a layer node. Last node is an outside node. And this makes more sense if we have like a window so let's say we want to do an adjustment to his face, make it a little bit brighter. I'll just make it brighter than I normally would so we can see it. And then we want to adjust everything that's not inside of that mask. We could right click, add node, add outside. And that's going to be a node with this little connector connected that takes the mask of this node and it flips it for this node. And so now we could take this gamma down. And so this node is brightening inside of the window. And this node is using that same window, but basically flipping it and darkening the outside. So that's great because you can just use one window to make two adjustments. And really what this outside node is, is just a serial node with this little connector connected. So you could disconnect this and it pretty much just becomes a serial node. There's a lot of cool things that you can do with nodes in the color page. One of them is just organizing your grade by naming the different parts. And the other one is if you're doing something fancy, say for instance, brightening things in this node, you can use a window to limit wherever that node is making its corrections. And anything that we do in this node is only going to happen inside of that mask, right? And you can do this kind of thing in any combination of those in a serial node, parallel node, or a layer node. But nodes aren't something to be afraid of in the color page. They're actually a really great tool to keep yourself organized and to help you shape images. If you're brand new to color and you wanna learn more about the workflow, there's a video right there. We're also making a color grading basics course. I'll put a link in the description for that. If you're watching this in the future, it's probably already out. If you're watching this right after we uploaded it, well, maybe it's gonna be a week or two. Hey, I hope this has been helpful for you. Let me know the best part in the comments, okay? Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.